It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your cash is? Is it in your wallet, your mattress, or do you have no idea at all? If you chose option three, don't worry, you're not alone. The world's biggest banks lose track of billions upon billions of dollars worth of cash every year, and nobody's really looking for it. Well, except for my outside correspondent Amy, who I sent out to look for it. And she better find it soon, otherwise we won't be able to afford these sick graphics. But the amount of missing cash could pay for way more than sick graphics. As of 2020, the Bank of England couldn't even guess the whereabouts of 50 billion pounds worth of cash. And that's pounds, the currency, to be clear. If that was all in five pound notes, it would be about 15,432,358.35 pounds of pounds. If it was all in 20s, well, that's a state secret for some reason. Regardless, it's a lot of bills to lose track of. So today we're asking the same question I asked my bank account after Girl Scout cookie season. Where'd all the money go? Well, the first thing to know is that cash use in the United Kingdom is way down. Back in 2006, Brits were using cash in 62% of their transactions. By 2016, that figure was around 40%. In 2018, Nando's, the true bellwether for British spending habits, said over 70% of their customers were paying by card, and by 2020, cash was changing hands in less than 13% of British purchases. That's a remarkable downfall. Keep in mind, the British usually love the outdated. But as cash payments got less popular, cash itself managed to get more popular. In the year 2000, there were about 24.1 billion pounds worth of sterling denominated notes floating around. Today, that figure is over 81 billion, with this many of each note kicking about. And before you go crying, inflation! 24.1 billion pounds in 2000 is about 43.5 billion pounds today, which according to my crack team of researchers, is less than 81 billion. But while the Bank of England had plenty of stats readily available to me at first Google, here's the number of 10 pound notes circulating in 2018, they can't tell you what most of that money is doing. A few years ago, they estimated that 20 to 24% of that cash was being used to pay for stuff. About 5% was sitting still in savings, i.e. mattresses, holes in the yard, that kind of thing. As for the other 70%, their official stance is, I don't know. There are plenty of possibilities. A certain amount of cash is probably kicking around overseas, being used for transactions or savings outside of the Bank of England's purview. A good amount may well be tied up in savings or transactions within the country, but just isn't being reported for one reason or another. Not a lot of babysitters who earn a couple 20s from their neighbors on weekends report them to the government. And of course, there's crime. If you're trying to buy, say, drugs, or if you sell, say, drugs, and want to pay your dealers and runners a fair wage for their hard work, you're probably not going to want it on your bank statement. Or if you have a bunch of cash you didn't come by honestly, you might want to stash it in a duffel, sneak it out of the country to somewhere where the banks don't ask so many questions about where that duffel bag full of cash came from, and get one of said banks to deposit the cash so now you just have normal bank account money which you can use for card payments at Nando's. That is, more or less, what's probably happening to huge amounts of the missing cash. But don't take it from me, take it from Britain's National Crime Agency, which believes that, quote, so much cash is leaving the country each year that it must be being moved by trucks. And while I'd love to make exclusive fun of the UK for letting truckloads of money slip off of their island, this missing cash situation is hardly unique to them. In fact, their currency isn't even that good for smuggling. The highest denomination of pounds circulating is the 50. Meanwhile, there's a 500 euro note and over 80% of the United States paper dollars in existence are hundreds. If you're trying to pack a duffel with cash, those currencies are way more space efficient. It's like the money laundering equivalent of shoving all your underwear in your shoes. So if all this cash is missing, how do you find it? Amy's favorite method is shaking trees. If you live in Tennessee, you can go to this website and either find money other people tried and failed to give you, or just poke around celebrities as business, which is how I found out that Taylor Swift's companies have at least $3,300-ish in unclaimed money, and Dolly Parton is owed $89.41 in utilities refunds. But how do governments find it? Well, in theory, they could put their top detectives on the case, but in practice, they just leave it alone. There are two main reasons for this, the simple one and the vaguely conspiratorial one. The vaguely conspiratorial one is that, for the government, making money is a great way to, well, make money. Because remember, money doesn't have inherent value. A hundred dollar bill is only worth a hundred dollars because we all agree to act like it is. But it only costs about 14 cents to make one. The Fed doesn't just crank out a set amount of cash every year. Banks come to them and say, hey, we'll wire you this amount of money if you print us this amount of money to put in our ATMs or whatever, and then they print up the money and hand it over. 
So if you give them $1,000, they'll give you 10 fresh Benjamins, which cost them a total of a buck 40. So while you swapped $1,000 for $1,000, they made $998.60 for doing very little. If they dumped a bunch of their budget and time into investigating and enforcing the lawful use of all the cash in the economy, some other segments of the government would see the savings and they would lose a bunch of that cash printing revenue. So why bother? That's the vaguely conspiratorial reason. Here's the simple one. Why should the government know where all the cash is? What? Do you want them tracing the whereabouts of every dollar bill they print as you give them hand over fist to the friendly shopkeep at the cash only bagel place down the street? Cash is untraceable by design. So arguably, all that quote unquote lost cash isn't really lost, it's just out there being cash. Which means I guess I should take Amy off the search. But if any of you find something out there, specifically something off the highway in Connecticut, let me know. I don't know exactly where all the paper money's gone, but I know exactly where you're gonna wanna send your digital money. This video's sponsor, Factor. This is a super busy time of year, and if you're like me, it's the kind of time where your aspiration to make more of your food at home and generally eat in a way that's humane to your GI tracts kind of falls to the wayside. But what if I told you that on those nights where you barely have time for a PB&J, you can still have a fresh, delicious, balanced meal right at home without the takeout prices? That's what Factor offers, with dozens of meals delivered to your door that you can heat up in two minutes and eat up in... Well, that's up to you. It's really that simple. You select what you want to eat, then it appears, and then you eat it because it actually tastes good. Far better than other pre-prepared meal options since it's never frozen and made by a company that specializes in exactly that. I use my real, non-missing dollars for both Factor and their parent company, HelloFresh, and I love the meals they send me, like this black pepper and sage pork chop, almost as much as I love the convenience of not having to go to the grocery store or having to clean a cast iron. So if you want to eat well in the least stressful way imaginable, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code HAI50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. You'll be supporting this channel when you do, so thanks in advance.